In this video, we fix a couple things. First off, we investigate this engine that won't start, only to find some schmoo in the carburetor bowl. Eventually, I'll blame that on E10 gas. Ethanol! Secondly, we play with it. And finally, to wrap it all up, we fix the drivetrain, which turns out to be some rusted chains. Then we enjoy our new DR mower. The subject of today's video is the Walk Behind DR Trimmer Mower. Self-propelled Pro XL Electric Start 8.75 Briggs & Stratton Professional Series Engine. Weighing in at 90 pounds with 14 inch resin wheels and a 20 inch cutting width. This trimmer was not a cheap purchase in its day and that's what makes it so much sadder that it's in such sorry shape now. So the first thing I like to do is take a look in the gas can and uh, I don't know if you can see it but there's some water sloshing around in there so I definitely need to drain the carburetor bowl. What I'm doing here is making a little drip pan out of tin foil or aluminum foil so I can uh, not be so messy. Now I'm using a half inch socket and a little quarter inch ratchet so I can loosen the retaining bolt on the carburetor bowl and I'm going to let it drip for a minute. I try to avoid getting gas on my hands because you know your skin is your biggest organ and no telling <laughs> what harm that can cause you in the long run. The schmoo in here kind of has the consistency of applesauce but once it dries out it turns to that familiar uh, aluminum oxide powder. You'll see that in a minute. But now I'm just going to go ahead and take off the fuel line and drain the tank the rest of the way. Always being careful not to get it in my yard and contaminate my beautiful garden. I'm going to clean everything up a little bit. Uh, I didn't have any carb cleaner so I'm just going to use the starting fluid and I just blast it off. I'm not too concerned about being too neat and tidy. Uh, I found that these small engines are really very forgiving. <laughs> so, you know, do do whatever feels right to you. And uh, you see little little applesauce falling off? <laughs> there we go. Okay, let's talk crud for a minute. So, as, as we saw, uh, my carburetor has a lot of corrosion to it. Big pitting on the aluminum. So, obviously, we have a, an aluminum oxide forming. That sort of problem. But what causes that? You know, most people say it's uh, ethanol, and I'm just going to roll with that. So ethanol is is uh, hydrophilic, which means it, it, it attracts water. It can pull moisture from the air, and uh, once a certain concentration and moisture in the gas is exceeded, uh, it can form a, an ethanol solution that, that will fall out of suspension with gas. And the sources I've read say that that, that happens above half of 1% water by volume in this uh, E10 10% ethanol gas. Ethanol can clean out uh, all the, the the varnish and gunk which is caused by old gas but also ethanol is, is uh, a little corrosive <laughs> and when it forms that gel and it blocks up the jets and whatever you know your mower is just not going to run. One other interesting note is is uh they say that that this ethanol gel at the bottom of these gas cans can actually be a breeding ground for microbes like bacteria and fungus and stuff all right just for giggles let's see if we can rehydrate this with just a drop of water because i don't know if this was suspended in gas or or water. That doesn't seem to be doing it. Let's let that dry out in the sun and try it with gas. For the sake of the experiment, I'm going to take our crud solution and save it. Leave it out in the sun to dehydrate again. And then, uh, <clears throat> see if adding gas after the water evaporates will let it get thick again. Okay, uh, so you know, had water in there and that didn't make goo. Had to think about it. So the gel, which is heavier than gas, sinks to the bottom. So it winds up in the bottom of the bowl, right? So that was probably a methanol gel with some other stuff. I don't have any methanol on me. Uh, 
you know, just denatured alcohol you can buy it at the hardware store, but I don't have any. But I do have some uh, isopropyl. So let's just do a little experiment, see if that's what this stuff was. Oops, I think I put way too much. But maybe that can dissolve, dissolve that stuff. See if it'll turn into a gel. As it evaporates, I'll keep an eye on it, and if it gets thick and gooey, we'll have solved the mystery of the goop that dries out. But I don't know. This isn't looking very promising either. Oh well. Yeah, so my little experiment was a was a total waste. And uh you know, I'm 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 not gonna try it a third time with, with gasoline. I think what I did wrong was by mixing it I broke down the structure of uh what I'm calling uh iron oxide. So the theory is is that whatever it is that is corrosive to the carburetor, it it gobbles up, consumes the the uh, aluminum, oxidizes it, and then it then it precipitates it into some sort of porous crystal, and then the gel that we're calling it the the uh, ethanol as it gets moist and falls out of solution with the gas, coats that and gets inside that little crystal structure giving it the applesauce context and, uh, con <laughs> consistency. Uh, so anyways, I don't know science. Shit. Shoot. Anyways, but but for real though, if, uh, if a chemist or somebody who knows about this happens to be watching this, I'd really appreciate to know what's going on. Um, All right, I'm just gonna flush the tank a little. I'm just gonna use gas. And then I'm going to do a second flush, but try to flush it through the uh, the the float. Add a little gas. All right, so it's dripping. We'll close that. Make sure it can it'll stop. This is a highly technical technique. <laughs> Take an old rag and just wipe out all the yuck. And also get the dirt off the outside. And then it's little O-ring gasket. Well, it's not an O-ring. <laughs> the square ring seal here. Just gently pull it through the rag to get some of the crust off of it. Don't want to break it because I don't have a spare on hand. Check. And finally this part. Get that cleaned up. Maybe poke through the holes with the wire get the crud off of it make sure it can still uptake gas properly all right so I'll take a single wire out of a braided piece of wire and just double check that all these ports are still good so yeah this one has a hole that goes through it like that plus one that goes through the top but most importantly is the center jet the main jet for the carburetor all right so I got it in there kind of poking it around I think it's in there yeah Let's make sure that main jets open yeah Ugh. seems to be open we'll put it back together all right, so I'm gonna take my my rubber here and get that seated. Hopefully, it's still tight enough to stay up by itself. There we go. Got the rubber on there, and then we take the bowl. We sneak the 
the bowl back on and we take our little nut I mean our little bolt there jet bolt I don't know what it's called I don't pretend to be smart oh take our 13 millimeter or half inch there we go not too tight just a just a little bit all right now we'll put some gas in the tank let's not go too crazy on the first run check for leaks Choke. So that's choked. Go ahead and close the gas can. Okay. That's on fast. And the beast belches to life. Alright, so what you're going to see is me screwing around with the choke because the sticker on the fan shroud shows the the opposite position of what the choke really is so here i am i'm like what's going on put the choke on Blah, bellows out smoke turns the choke off the next part is me trying to use the self-propelled you see it shaking that wasn't me shaking it that was the self-propelled not working but the uh the whacker deck <laughs> the weed whacker deck sure does work kind of in this next clip you'll see how poorly it moves it wasn't getting up to speed properly uh look at that look, look at all that crap it left wasn't idling up high enough so this wasn't idling right wasn't spinning fast enough and it's got one of those uh, auto throttles that's spring loaded with a little fin uh, that's controlled by the you know blown by the, the cooling fan <laughs> all right so all I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna work the throttle back and forth a little bit make sure that it's not stuck I'd already done it before I turned the camera on. <laughs> I'm doing it again to show you what I'm doing. You know, so rev it up, vroom, vroom. And, uh, but the other thing is, there, there's a spring that controls it. You can see the spring right there. It's a little bit rusty. You know, if the spring was weak, it might not rev up far enough. So you could adjust the spring by bending the ends a little tighter or something, or replace it. Whatever I did, it worked. It started revving up higher and cutting a lot better. In order to diagnose the transmission, I had to take the skid plate off, and that's pretty easy. There's only three bolts. So you got this one that's on the you know, front driver's side, and then you got a couple more on the rear. And the skid plate is just a solid piece of plastic, really nothing too sophisticated. So there's the rear driver's side coming off right there. And now we're getting to the the uh, passenger <laughs> rear there's nothing more frustrating than losing your nuts and bolts so try to keep up with them get a container to throw them in that's just an old citronella candle can and then once you get the the three uh, fasteners disconnected it's really as easy as just uh, sliding the thing over to the side you can I struggle a little bit here but it really is uh, not that big of a deal Wow, that's an interesting setup. Okay. All right, so these wheels only spin one direction and, and lock. So we have direct drive come from there. That belt seems to be fairly good. See if I can push that handle. See if that gets the belt tight. Okay, so the belt is still it's a little loose. I don't know. We need to get a closer look at that that mechanism. So when I squeeze the trigger, we get that tightening of the I don't think that tightens the belt. I think it just engages the drive mechanism. 
Hmm. Let's fire it up and see what it looks like. What we're looking at here is we're noticing that the pulley on the transmission spins all the time. And the camera's wiggling because I'm squeezing the trigger to engage it. All right, this gearbox is very hot. And the way this lever works, I kind of wonder if that's some sort of slip differential. I don't know, like some hydrostatic transmission or something in there. Because that is just way too hot. And these chains are rusted solid so I think that's the problem I think these chains might be what the problem is I'm gonna try lubricating them see if I can't get them to spin because I just really think I should be able to get some movement out of there don't think that's normal that I can't get them to move at all I'm just gonna soak them <laughs> Oops, a click. Yeah. So I've made an absolute soaking mess of all this, but it does, you know, want to turn now. Still takes some force, but I'm going to try it again. Already, it goes forward and backwards now. So that's progress. Let's see if we can get it to start. Oh, and looky here, we got rah, power. Okay, self-propelled is operational. Not only that, she pulls, dude. To loosen everything up, I set the back end on a bucket and I rigged up the handle so the spin on its own loosen things up. The the bottom of this pan is solid. There's not any drain holes in it. And that looks like a water line right there to me. I don't know. So I'm just going to pop a couple holes in it. Uh, I'm going to keep them towards the back because the front of this is going to be shooting all kinds of clippings. I don't want to fill this up. It's probably why they didn't put holes in it was to keep it clean. But I just don't want any more rust problems. So I'm just going to go, I don't know, right here. <laughs> And right here. Yeah, just to minimize that. Okay. Let's put her back together. Yeah, there's still a couple kinks in here, but I think that'll work its way out eventually. These are loose. Huh. All right, I'm gonna assume that uh, since I didn't move the plate that's connected to the plastic, that this will just align itself and not drag on the weed whacker head. This is a, uh, what size is that? A 3 8 I'm gonna put this back on. I left the back too loose, and then I'll tighten those up when this is done, just in case alignment is an issue. Now all that's left is uh, I need to buy some new string because that's too short to, to be useful. Need to you can see it right that little piece of metal right there. That's the kill switch. I need to adjust that so it'll make contact with it. And then another thing that's kind of odd is uh, the sticker shows open and choke, but this arm here that chokes it <laughs> and that opens it so I don't know but if you actually look at the knob that shows choke going the opposite way as the sticker does so whatever but it's done and I can do the rest of this off camera if I need to booyah my neighbor gave me this because he knows I like to fix stuff so anyways 
for the tiny little price of a little bit of oil, splash of gas, I now have a thousand dollar weed whacker. Walk behind self-propelled weed whacker. Not too shabby. And again, I'd like some feedback on this video. If uh, Is it too long? Too short? Do you like these long formats? Let me know.